FIFA is planning on hosting the World Cup once every two years. In this video, I'm going to talk about their plan, its drawbacks, and the potential benefits it has. So please stick around. So, every time we talk about FIFA, we have to talk about money. Yeah, man. And money is a big reason behind this uh, decision. If you look at the financial reports of both UEFA and FIFA, you will see some damning results, something that is really peculiar about these two organizations. UEFA, which only takes care of European football matters, makes much more money than FIFA, which encompasses all of the federations, all of the continents and the nations on the globe. And the reason for that is that UEFA does have the Europa League and the Champions League especially in order for them to increase their revenue. So their revenue is stable and steady and higher than FIFA every year for the past few decades. While FIFA only breaks the one billion pound barrier in terms of revenue on World Cup year, for example in 2018. Every other year where FIFA does not have a World Cup, they are usually below one billion pounds in revenue. And Gianni Infantino, the new FIFA president, who used to be one of the high-ranked uh, administrators at UEFA, he knows this. He knows the books and he knows what needs to be done at FIFA, which is to increase their revenue. Otherwise, they are about to die as an organization. So let's analyze some of the drawbacks, some of the potential issues with this proposal. To me, there are three main issues. And the first one is the prestige of the competition. The second one is the burden on the host nation. And finally, it's problems with the calendar and player fitness. So let's take the first point, prestige. While I do agree, the lower the supply of something, the higher its value is, this does not necessarily apply to football competitions. Uh, at least that's how I feel. Take the Champions League, for example. The Champions League is played every year and yet it's still as prestigious as, as it's ever been. And many professional footballers, whenever they are asked, can you choose between the Champions League or the World Cup? Not all of them say the World Cup. So it shows that a competition that is played every year can still be prestigious. As for the burden on the host nations, I think that football is evolving right now. I don't think that in the future we are going to see single nations or even a pair of nations uh, cooperating together in order to organize a World Cup simply because it's not viable. Uh, we have so many examples of white elephants in uh, Athens, for example, with the Olympic Games, but also in South Africa, in Brazil, in Russia, uh, infrastructures that were built just for a one month event and that were never used ever since. I think that now we are moving more towards regional uh, competitions, what we are seeing with Mexico, the US and Canada. Maybe in the future we're gonna see a Southeast Asian uh, World Cup, you know, organized by Vietnam, the Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia, for example. Uh, but I don't think that there's gonna be a one single host anytime uh, in the future. I think that China is realistically the only nation who can afford to host a World Cup uh, by themselves, but also who can draw some financial and sporting benefits in the long run from it. And then finally, uh, the calendar and player fitness. This seems to be the biggest issue. And uh, FIFA is actually planning on changing the calendar. So usually they do have six international dates throughout the year. Now they are planning on reducing that to just two dates, one in October and one in March. This could actually work, right? It could be a good thing for football because what this is gonna force FIFA to do in the process is actually to make the qualification process much more efficient than it is right now. So maybe the games will be much more premium than they are right now to try to make it as lean as possible and this would allow uh, leagues to actually have much more break time uh, for the players in order to avoid fatigue. Uh, what leagues could do is either they can have a mid-season kind of break like it's done in uh, Germany, France and Spain for example the month of January well there aren't many games and so the players can have a big break or in the case of the Premier League maybe they could start later since there are not as many international dates in between, maybe the season could start in uh, beginning or mid-September, for example, which would allow more time in the summer to hold such competitions. But hey, I'm still on the fence on this because I'm still waiting on details. Uh, FIFA hasn't been uh, very clear on how are they planning on changing the calendar, but uh, I can see it working if they reduce the amount of international games in a season. According to FIFA, over 3.5 billion people watched the World Cup in 2018 in Russia. That's half of the world's population. Not only that, 
but 87% of viewers were from countries that have never won the World Cup before. That means they were not from countries like Italy and Brazil, uh, Germany or France, for example. Okay. Now, this is a very cool statistic because it shows that there is an opportunity for FIFA, which is representation. Uh, when you think of countries like uh, China and India, for example, both of them account for 2.8 billion people. That's more than the third of the human population. And yet, they are never represented in a World Cup. Uh, I think the last time China was at the World Cup was in 2002. Um, so I think that if uh, a third of the world is interested in the game and yet they are not represented in uh, this competition in the World Cup, then there is something wrong with it. Then there needs to be some change to allow such nations and such population, a third of the human population, to actually be represented at the World Cup. The other issue is that of opportunity. Now, big nations like France or England, for example, they can field three or four competitive teams from their countries, right? They have so much talent, it's ridiculous, right? They have so much talent that they can, that they know what to do with, right? But there are many footballing nations. Think of nations like South Korea, for example, or Morocco, or Ghana, or Chile, or Mexico, for example, or Croatia, right? Who are good footballing teams, but they don't have the resources that those big nations do. So that means that they don't get as many golden generations as those other nations. Which means that for a nation like Croatia, for example, or Morocco, right? It would make uh, sense to try to maximize those rare, scarce, golden generations you get to a maximum in order to increase your football and uh, pedigree, right? Take Mor Morocco, for example. Morocco right now is experiencing an explosion of talent. They have the likes of uh, Ashraf Hakimi, Hakim Ziyech, Youssef and Nasseri, right? So all of these are very, very good players who play in big clubs right now, who are essential players, key players in their big clubs. Morocco is never going to have that chance ever again. Not only that, but they are at the right age. Uh, it's not it's not as if uh, Hakim Ziyech was 36 and Ashraf Hakimi was 18, right? They're all around the same age. They are all hitting their prime. That means that this World Cup in Qatar, and if there was another one in 24, uh, 2024 and another one in 2026, this would be the best uh, opportunity for Morocco to actually make it to the later rounds, to even go to the semifinals or even attempt to win it like Croatia did in 2018. However, if there is one World Cup every four years, then nations like Morocco and Croatia and Chile and Mexico and Ghana would not have as many opportunities. Think of Ghana, for example, in uh, 2010, right? That generation of Mikael Essien and Muntari and Tiana Samoa and uh, uh, Mensa, right? That was a very, very good generation of very good footballers, but they could only play together in one World Cup. What if they had two or three World Cups together, right? They could have went much further than they did in 2010. And so by having a World Cup every two years, these smaller nations can, uh, uh, will get much more opportunities to actually uh, attempt to improve their football in pedigree and go further in the competition than they can now uh, with the World Cup every four years. So anyway, guys, like I said, I'm still on the fence on this. I can see the, the benefits of it, but also the drawbacks of it. Um, if you agree or disagree with me, please make sure to leave it in the comment section below. Please try to answer the following question, which is, are you for or against a World Cup every two years and why? Please start a conversation. I read all of the comments and I reply to all of the comments. So please make sure to leave a comment where you share your opinion with us. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe and cheers.